this year we're back with our predicted AQA A-level psychology papers and video walkthroughs. Laura, our head of psychology, has looked at the trends and patterns that have come up in the past. She's done an analysis of the topics and questions that have appeared in previous exam seasons and has used this to write psychology predicted papers for this year. Follow the link in the description below and this will take you to all the predicted papers that we have available. In addition to this, she's done video walkthroughs of all three papers so you can see what a top mark band answer looks like. These will talk you through the skills you'll need to interpret the questions and know how to structure your answers. Full paper three, issues and options in psychology. There are questions and walkthroughs for all of the optional topics. We've not limited it just to a selection of the most popular like some revision resources do. Whichever three topics you've prepared for and been taught, there will be questions and support for you. You'll see questions in the same style as those in the exams and be able to unpick what they're actually asking, what needs to be included in your responses and how they should be structured. Then you'll be ready to do exactly the same in the actual exam. Now you can get all three papers that we've written for this year and all the video walkthroughs in our masterclass, or you can use these topics as a starting point for your revision. Please remember to revise everything as these are just predictions. We don't have any additional information or know anything in advance of the exams. We have not seen the real papers. Let's get started. Now, we know for paper two, psychology in context, there are three sections in the paper. Approaches in psychology, biopsychology and research methods. And we'll go through each of these topics in this video. You can use the timestamps in the description to jump to the section you're interested in, or you can just sit back and listen. So first up, we have approaches in psychology. Within it, you should brush up on the psychodynamic approach. Now, you need to ensure you understand the foundational concepts of the psychodynamic approach, such as the structure of the personality, id, ego, superego, the role of unconscious processes and the significance of early childhood experiences. Be familiar with Freud's theory of psychosexual development, where unresolved conflicts at any stage can lead to fixation and influence adult personality and behaviour. Be prepared to discuss Freud's case studies such as Little Hands, which illustrates how unconscious conflicts manifest in behaviour. Understand the Oedipus complex and its relevance to the development of the superego. Additionally, explore defence mechanisms like repression, denial and projection, which are strategies used by the ego to manage conflict between the id and the superego. Evaluate the psychodynamic approach by considering its strengths, such as its influence on psychotherapy and the emphasis on the importance of early experiences. Discuss limitations like the lack of scientific rigour, though, due to the reliance on case studies and the untestable nature of many of Freud's concepts. Be ready to apply the psychodynamic approach to real life scenarios, such as understanding the roots of anxiety disorders or relationship issues. For example, how repressed childhood trauma might manifest in adult behaviour or psychological symptoms. And then brush up on the humanistic approach too. Focus on the key ideas of the humanistic approach, particularly the concepts of self-actualization, free will and the importance of subjective experience. Understand Carl Rogers' theory of the self, including the concepts of self-concept, ideal self and conditions of worth, as well as Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which outlines the stages through which individuals must progress to achieve self-actualization. Be prepared to explain Roger's client-centred therapy and the role of unconditional positive regard in personal growth. Understand the application of Maslow's hierarchy in various contexts such as workplace, motivation or personal development. Evaluate the humanistic approach by considering its strengths such as its positive view of human nature and its application in therapeutic settings. Discuss limitations including its lack of empirical evidence and potential cultural bias towards individualism. Be ready to apply the humanistic approach to scenarios like personal growth, education or therapy. For example, how an individual struggle to achieve self-actualization might influence their motivation or how conditions of worth can impact self-esteem and mental health. And of course, we've got the biological approach. Ensure you understand the biological approach's focus on genetics, neurochemistry and the brain's structure as the basis for behaviour and mental processes. Be familiar with concepts like genetic inheritance, the role of neurotransmitters and brain localization, which refers to how different areas of the brain are responsible for specific functions. Be prepared to discuss key studies such as research on the genetic basis of mental disorders, for example, twin studies on schizophrenia and the role of neurotransmitters like serotonin in depression. 
understands the implications of brain imaging studies that show the relationship between a brain structure and behaviour, such as the work of Broca and Wernicke on language production and comprehension, evaluate the biological approach by considering its strengths, such as its scientific basis and the development of effective biological treatments like medication for mental disorders. Discuss limitations, including its reductionism, which may overlook the role of environment and cognition and ethical concerns related to genetic research. Be ready to apply the biological approach to scenarios like explaining the development of mental disorders or the impact of brain injury on behaviour. For example, how a genetic predisposition combined with environmental stresses might contribute to the onset of schizophrenia, or how neurotransmitter imbalances can explain symptoms of depression. Now, secondly, we've got a biopsychology. Within it, look at first the divisions of the nervous system, central and peripheral. Ensure you understand the structure and function of the central nervous system, the CNS, which consists of the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, the PNS, which involves all of the nerves outside the CNS. Be prepared to discuss the importance of these divisions in understanding how the body and brain interact to control behaviour. Evaluate the complexity of the nervous system, noting how disruptions in different parts of the system can lead to various neurological and psychological conditions. Then you'll want to look at the role of adrenaline in the fight or flight response. Understand how adrenaline released by the adrenal medulla during a stressful situation prepares the body for the fight or flight response. This includes physiological changes such as increased heart rate, dilation of pupils and the redirection of blood flow to essential organs and muscles. Be ready to apply this knowledge to scenarios such as the explaining how the body reacts during the emergencies or high stress situations. For example, how adrenaline might enhance physical performance in a dangerous situation, but also lead to longer term stress related health issues if the response is activated too frequently. Brush up on the role of neurotransmitters in synaptic transmission, focus on the process of synaptic transmission, where neurotransmitters are released from the presynaptic neuron, cross the synaptic cleft and bind to receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. Key neurotransmitters to understand include serotonin, dopamine and acetylcholine, each playing crucial roles in mood regulation, reward and muscle activation respectively. Why is the split brain research and evaluation? Ensure familiarity with Roger Sperry's split brain research, which studied patients who had undergone corpus colostomy to treat severe epilepsy. Understand how this research provided insights into lateralization of brain function, revealing the left hemisphere is typically responsible for language and the right for visual spatial tasks. Evaluate Sperry's research by discussing its strengths, such as providing clear evidence for the lateralization of brain functions and limitations, such as the small sample size and the fact that split brain patients may not be representative of the general population. Consider the ethical implications of the research as well. And finally, look at fMRIs as a method of studying the brain. Understand how functional magnetic resonance imaging fMRI works by measuring a brain activity through changes in blood flow. This technique allows researchers to see which areas of the brain are active during specific tasks, providing a non-invasive way to study brain function in real time. Be prepared to discuss the strengths of fMRI, such as its high spatial resolution and ability to provide dynamic images of brain activity. Also consider the limitations, including its high cost, the need for participants to remain still, and the fact that it only shows correlations between brain activity and behaviour, not causation. Evaluate the ecological validity of findings from fMRI studies, given the artificial environment in which data is collected. And last but not least, we have research methods. Now, research methods are important across all the papers. Recognise that the content for research methods appears in all of them, not just paper two. Even though this is where you'll see it most, familiarise yourself with examples of research and identify key elements such as aims, hypotheses, variables, control measures, samples used and data collected. Exposure to different research scenarios is going to better prepare you for the new piece of research you'll face in this section. Now, here in paper two, prepare for 12 mark designer study questions. Be prepared to design a study that addresses a specific research question. This might include selecting an appropriate research method, for example, an experiment, an observation, a self-report, deciding on the type of data to collect, qualitative or quantitative, and considering how to operationalize variables. Ensure you can justify your choices, explaining why a particular method or design is suitable for the research question at hand. 
review a past paper questions and our predicted papers to help anticipate the types of study design questions that may come up, practice writing out detailed study designs that incorporate all necessary elements, method, data collection, ethics and design within the context of different psychological research areas. This practice is going to help you structure your answers clearly and concisely during the exam. Now we really hope our resources help you. Laura is putting loads of work and we hope they're useful. Good luck!